uh, you know that now in the service you made tshuva. What exactly is happening during these 10 days of tshuva, which of course includes the first two days of Rosh Hashanah. So now we're in an intermediate period. Now what do the rabbis talk about now? All the different kinds of things that the rabbis have to say that you hear in your shuls, even the Svarni shuls now, all have to do with what we call Pashtani learning. They have only to do with what we, we understand from the Shulchan Aruch in the least Kabbalistic way that we possibly can. But the Kabbalah at one time was tremendously powerful, especially in the Mediterranean world, but we see that it was powerful also different places uh, from the Baal Shem Tov onwards, the Rabbi Nachman and the Balatanya and so on and so forth. All these people have tremendous knowledge to disperse to the masses. So what exactly are we talking about over here? So why is it that the rabbis don't talk about the one thing which is the basic of all things that have to do with Rosh Hashanah, which is the process of the Nesira. And the reason why is because in the world that we live in today, they don't know it. <laughs> they don't know anything about it. It's like Rebbe Nachman's uh, story, uh, not story, but the, the metaphor that he says is a secret and there's a secret within the secret where the secret within the secret, people don't even know that there's a secret. And so therefore, what you have here is a lot of background. In other words, the if you have uh, the real, real high tenor, the beautiful, beautiful operatic uh, melody comes to the people who understand what the Nasir is all about. And that's why I keep wanting to say Nasir and Nasir and Nasir, because now we're living in an age where this could be said again. So, uh, many rabbis, maybe the Mugubalim now say that this is the time that Kabbalah is coming out again. Now, this is not messianic Kabbalah. And this is not some kind of uh, a practical Kabbalah where we're trying to manipulate uh, Malachim, uh, so on and so forth. This is a Kabbalah of trying to understand the Vegas Hashem, get as close as we possibly can to Hashem and unite ourselves with Hashem. Because everything we, un- we understand from the Shvira down is breaking things, breaking, splitting things off. We live in the, the Olam, which is called the Olam Aparut. And as a result of that, we all see, th- we see things constantly separated. We're constantly separating each other, or ourselves. But what's, what we want to see happen, and it's not, it's starting on Rosh Hashanah. And the main thing that's happening in the 10 days of Rosh Hashanah is the Nisira. Now, the Sira, the concept of the Nisira is the build up the female aspect of the world, which is the part of the world which is broken, is to build it up, bring it back to full strength, and make it possible for it to have a Yichud with the male aspect of the world. That's what Nisira is about. Now, this takes place on Shemini and Saris. As we said at the very beginning, it should have taken place on the seventh day of Bracious, but it didn't. As a result of that, it's been pushed off. Let's see a little bit more about the Nisira so we can understand. There are ten spheros in Zah, and there are ten spheros in the Nook. Now, ultimately, if the male and the female aspects of the world, you have to think about our world. As I've said, I say it over and over again, remind yourself that we are in a ball. We're sitting on top of a giant ball. We are like ants. We're on this ball and this ball is turning. It's rotating. All of us who are in alive today, we have a ticket of so many turns of that ball. How many days do we have in our lives to uh, to count? Well, those are all turns of this ball. And eventually the ticket runs out and you're not on the ball anymore. You're somewhere else. But that doesn't mean that you're gone. It just means that your physical sense on this ball is gone. But your spirituality never never leaves because it's a kailuk from Hashem himself. Let's go a little bit more about the, uh, about the Nisira. So that we understand, have to understand that every single day of the Yisira, something is being built up into the Nook. What's the point? Because originally, and you have this as a metaphor, as I said before, in Adam, in Adam and Eve, and Adam and Chava, is that they were built back to back, the Shiva, they called her a tail, or they have different kinds of words for saying, talking to her. Of course, the, the Kabbalah go into, into numbers and start to show you what the real origin, the real root 
of all of this is getting closer and closer to the Abishter. But what happens here is, is that we have a 10-day period of the transfer of the Gevuros, which are inside of Zah, to the Nukva, because the Nukva is made out of Gevuros. Gevuros are Dinim, and they fit her just perfectly. But inside of Zah, it's a big problem for the male. The male carries both the male and female parts. And his job is to make sure that she gets the female parts. But while they're inside of him, they don't fit because he's naturally chesed. That's what we're trying to approach here, is two different elements that are not commingled, but that he is chesed and she is gevura, and the two of them have the possibility them to meet in the middle. Let's see if we can... Uh, we can read a little bit of the Shara Kavanos. So now we have all the dinim that are inside of Zah. Now you know the Rav uses the word Gevuros and dinim, and they go together. So what the main thing, that the, one of the main things, uh, it's hard to say the main thing, but a main thing that Kabbalah, the Kabbalist is, wants to do is find the path to sweeten the dinim. This is a very contradictory thing. On the one hand, you want to build up the Nook, because the Nook needs all, that's the female aspect, needs all the dinim that she can get. She's creative. She's a creator because you can't create without dinim. On the other hand, they're also, uh, they're also gavuros. They form, they create, and they do things like that. So So when we talk about the nisir, we're going to remove the dinim from za over a course of a period of 10 days. The first two days is keser and chachma. So now you get the idea. This is that the next, each one of the next days, and this is contained, if you have any svarm or any and knowledge, which you probably don't, of uh, a kavanos. And the kavanos show you that in the phrase zachreno, we start, there is an asira of the ten parts of one of the parts, because every sphera, that says we have keser down to malchus, every one of them has ten spheros inside of it. So that in each one of them, and every single day, so now we're in the eighth day. So the eighth day, we are working on, uh, let's see, uh, we're, I think we're working on Natsuk today. So, uh, uh, let's see, working on Natsuk or Hod, I don't have the thing in front of me, and I have no memory. So we're working on them, but there are ten spheros in it. And according to the, as you're saying, Zachreinu, L'chaim, Melech, Hofetz, V'chaim, each one of them, as they're being said, represents a movement of a one-tenth of the sphera uh, in the nook that is going to separate herself from Zah and become independent. So he says, Yesh de Bechinos, there were two different Bechinos. Achaz ku laham shech kol adinim sheyesh bekeser shebo. So let's talk about the first day of Rosh Hashanah. He has powerful dinim inside of his head. Because the head is the highest part, so therefore the most powerful part will be there, and he's going to transfer them over to her. Vlitnan Bekesar Shaba, and he's going to put her into her Kesar. Vishal Chachma Shaba, and then also the Chachma of him, the Chachma Shaba. Vichain al Derek Zan, same way like this. Tishlom Esis Sphira Shaba, until he has cleaned all of the dinim that are inside of him and brought them over to her. So the second aspect is this. The ten spheres inside of her. Now this is a general principle in the in in uh, that we can we can understand. The Rav has given us this concept that we said before. Me uh, 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 I think it's Bisari Era Aloka. I can't remember the exact the second principle, I just forgot it for a minute. From my body, I can see godliness. So, therefore, although we are a reverse hologram and we're the physical part, but as you go into the more spiritual aspects of how we got to be here, we see that there is a unity and a one connectedness of us between, between Zer Anpin and his Nukva. So where does the Nukva in relationship to Zah? As you remember the story of Adam and Eve, it's a very it's it teaches a lot about Zer Anpin and his and his Nukva. 
is, is that we can see that her position is from his chaza, which means his chest, ulamala, ulamata, and going downwards. So they're like twins, or one brother and sister who are placed back to back to each other, and she is stuck onto his back, but she's her head, the top of her head, which is her keter, her keser, is at his chest right here, the chaza, the diaphragm, up above the diaphragm. That's where she starts. So he has a he has a position from here upwards where she is not attached. And this is very common in all the Kabbalah that one from one parts it to the next. That you're actually starting to talk about where the rosh part is always revealed and the other part is covered by the lower parts of it. This is to be contained in the in the sod class as we get more deep deeply into that. This will be claimed over uh, contained over there. So he says that since she's at his chaza. So therefore the dinim in the lower half of his teferis, where is the lower half of his teferis? It's from his chaze down to his, below his belly button, which is down below that part, the bottom of the stomach, which is where the yesod starts. That's what's actually going to go into his kasser, into her kasser. She has a very large Kasser. Now these are all things that you pick up in the Yotzot Chaim. It will explain all of this. Is is that the structure of the spiritual world does not necessarily look like our structure. Just imagine yourself as being invisible, but that you're still, you're still there. And your female aspect of yourself is on your back, and that female is, if you say, like a backseat driver. And so that that aspect, though, actually the head of it is very large. And it extends from, that is the female aspect, that rosh extends from the chaza, again, the chest, down all the way down to uh, to the hips, which is called the netzachod yisod. We also call this nai. And that's where the female aspect exists. So he says, So that means his lower part of him is where her head is. Because her head, that is the, her Kesser goes all the way from his chazet down to her yisod. That's that's where she's located. In nasta bekesser shaba. So all of those dinim that he has in that aspect are going to be given over to her. For hadinim should be perik a rishon the netzach shaba. So now here's another fact: is is that all of these different parts of him, these different spheres, can be divided, which are if they're physical. So netzach, let's say, is your right leg. So your right leg actually has three parts. There's a part from the hip to the knee, and a part from the knee to the ankle, and then the ankle is related to the foot that's the bottom of it. Each one of those has a tremendous amount of light in it. And in this particular case, it's the light of dinner. And it's that idea, the right leg, the left leg, and then the yisod, which is in human beings, a sexual organ, which is also the organ of transmittal to the nook, which is the same idea in the spiritual world. <clears throat> it also has three parts too. So we have the possibility of taking each one of the parts of what we call the nai or the netzachot yisod and transferring them over to the nukva, but in different stages, because each one of them will re- re- represent three or four, depending on how we're counting, uh, different parts that are uh, 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 of the transfer for the legs, it so it would be for the legs that if we have this situation, what cause we have this situation, where the female is from the chest, from the lower part of the chest, down to the sexual organ, that's where her head is, then it means the legs will be lined up with the rest of her body, which includes Chachma Bina, and all the way down to Malchus, is going to be corresponding to his legs. So therefore we have a a concept of translate a transferring from his different sections of the legs and the yisod. There are three, which is a total of nine, and there's a transfer from all of those places of going to different places in the nook in order to be able to build her up. This is a deep, complicated. I set it out. Let's understand the sira again as a conclusion as we conclude this whole shir here. The idea in the Sira is, is that we are building the female aspect of the world. Our world is the lowest possible female aspect. It's ball-shaped, it's, it's, it's cyclical, 
goes around every day, takes 24 hours, you start thinking about what happens in the fact that there's a movement going on here. This, to me, is mind-boggling, that we're in a place where we think it's static, and it's not. It's constantly moving and changing. People coming in and out of the world, in and out of the world. And this is the same way that reproduction works, too. It comes into Zayat, goes out to the Nukva. It comes out of the Nukva, goes back into Zayat. It keeps going back around in different ways, all part of the process of creation. So the seer is a 10-day process of moving the dinim, that is, the the uh, the gavuros, the female aspect, which is inside of Zah, and over those 10 days, to make them into the Nukva, that is the 10 days culminating in Rosh, in Yom Kippur, where at that point the Nasira actually ends and she is open. She, he, Daza will become uh, free, I guess that's the right word. Za will become an uh, independent ed, uh, entity of Chesed. And so from the time of Rosh Hashanah, excuse me, Yom Kippur onward, we start the dealing with Sukkot and coming into Sukkot, which is the time of Chesed. So let's get to see how these different things work, and with God's help, we'll get over to it. Call to it.